a step-by-step -step guide to creating a SWOT analysis for home service business entrepreneurs. What is a SWOT analysis? When should it be done? Why it's important? And I'll even give you a step-by-step -step process on how to do one for your own business. All that and more straight ahead. Let's go. Here's a couple of fun facts about home service businesses. One, the overwhelming majority. I'm talking 99% and above are running businesses doing five, six, and seven figures in annual sales. Number two, every day we're caught in our own whirlwind because the business you currently own is more than likely the largest, biggest, baddest thing you've ever owned. And for that reason, it's difficult to know which step to take next. What's the most important move you can make right now, which is gonna have the biggest impact on tomorrow. That's the exact reason a SWOT analysis is important. And if you do a really quick Google search, you can certainly find the definition of the four boxes in a SWOT analysis, but what you're gonna also find is case studies of large generic businesses, and they don't really apply to home service businesses specifically, which is exactly what this video is about for home service business entrepreneurs. Now, over the last 10 years, I've been blessed to be in the room and help strategic plan with some of the largest, most well-known home service businesses across the world. And what I've learned is when you're a large organization, a SWOT analysis is incredibly important but it's like moving a cruise ship. As I said, 99% or greater of home service companies are five, six, and seven figures. You're a jet ski. It's easy for you to move, yet you don't have the resources or the ability to run a SWOT analysis because it's just not taught. So hopefully this video brings some light and some clarity to you as you start your strategic planning process. So let's define what a SWOT analysis is. It's an early stages exercise during your strategic plan to identify your competitive advantages and the gaps within your organization. It's really split up into three different components. First, your internal. So the top half of your SWOT analysis is your strengths and weaknesses. These are the things that you can control. Internal, you can control your marketing message, you can control your brand, you can control your sales process. The bottom half is your external, things that you can influence but not necessarily control. You cannot control the emerging technology. You can't control COVID-19. So these are things that you wanna be aware of, opportunities to take advantage and capitalize to grow your business, and threats, potentially negative or harmful things in your business for today or in the future. And the third, probably the most important part of all this, is how can we leverage the opportunities and threats with our strengths and weaknesses? How do we shore up our strengths to make sure they become they retain strengths and how do we make our weaknesses strengths and in what order do we make our weaknesses strengths so the goal of a SWOT analysis really to put our business into specific categories it doesn't really define a specific strategy but it identifies opportunities for our business to capitalize and in what order we want to capitalize those so that's part of the first stage here is defining what a SWOT analysis really is now we talk about an early stages exercise in strategic planning what does that mean I like to look at strategic planning in three different phases. Phase one is establishing a baseline, a benchmark. Where are you today? Because before you can say, I want to go from 100,000 to 100 million, you have to understand where you are right now so you can know how you can leverage your strengths and in what order to make those weaknesses strengths. So a baseline is really important. The second part of your strategic plan is casting vision, assigning where you want to be tomorrow. So I like to use this philosophy called top-down planning. It's a really cool way to start abstract. Your sales goal really means nothing unless it's supported by your customers, equipment, and personnel. But we really start to identify our sales goal as it relates to our baseline, our benchmark. So we can be realistic knowing where we are today from a cash perspective, from an operational perspective, to know that the goal that we set forth is actually attainable. The third part is the tactical part. Now we know what we're good at. Now we know where we wanna be. Now at what order are we gonna create those processes for our organization? So it's important to think about those. So if we look at the SWOT analysis and the two by two matrix with the four boxes, it's important we know what's internal and what's external. So we're gonna start at the top, our strengths. These are internal. The beautiful thing about home service businesses is we're pulling from the same bucket of information. The internal things we can control, every home service company is essentially the same. We've got our core competency, the services we offer, the brand message, the vision of who we are as a company. We've got our marketing, we've got our lead generation, we've got our sales process, we've got our production, our inventory management. All of the process is really the same. We just have a different deliverable that we're giving to our clients or our customers. 
So what one person's strengths might be another person's weakness. You may have a really good dialed in marketing message, a killer website, tons of reviews that drives a ton of leads. Another company might really struggle with that. You might really struggle with sales and getting a higher average ticket and a higher closing percentage and another company might excel. So I'm gonna give you some resources and just a general outline of ideas for you to start with your SWOT analysis, but a good exercise that you can do generally is just to start with documenting your customer journey. It's a cool exercise that you'll start to see these and highlight these areas. The most important thing to do with a SWOT analysis, specifically with your strengths and weaknesses, is to make sure, this is really important, if you take one thing away from this video, this is it, in a SWOT analysis, is to make sure these strengths and weaknesses are based on a process, not a person. If you are a solopreneur and you're out there doing it yourself and you're really good at cleaning or doing or fixing the thing, is it based on a person, you, or is it based on a process? If you've got a rock star office manager that's killer at scheduling and dispatching and getting everybody organized, but it's because of them and they left your organization, would that strength become a weakness? So if you do have that situation, how can we turn that strength as a person into a process? This is how we create a win-win in our organization. If we have a process documented that we can train people in, that's a win. We complement the personnel, the people with our process to excel even further. So as you go through this exercise, ask yourself, is this a strength or is this a weakness because of a person that's in my organization or because of the process that's documented? As an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, our goal is to get better and rise up every single day, but it's also to make sure those people in our organization are also rising up Otherwise, they can, one, feel like they're in a dead-end job, right? So how can we excel and ascend everybody up? How can we not only cast vision for ourselves and our sales, but cast vision for our employees to make sure they know they have a future and they have future growth in our organization? So that's the goal of strengths and weaknesses, internal, customer journey, where do we excel, and is it based on a process, not a person? Now let's talk about our external factors, the opportunities and threats. Again, these are things that we cannot control, but our business can influence. Now, the third step is how we how these relate to each other, but we certainly want to look at opportunities and threats and kind of what's looming. Is there emerging technology? Is there a rising competitor that's adding services? Is there a changing demographic, socio-political? Is there an economic uncertainty? Again, these are things that we can't control, but we wanna be aware of so that we can leverage our strengths for opportunities and hedge or even remove threats based on the way we see them in our organization. So again, the bottom half is external. These are things that we cannot necessarily control. Let's move to how. How do we create and complete a SWOT analysis for our own business? It starts with your strengths and weaknesses. Remember we talked about our customer journey and documenting each one of those phases of the customer experience and highlighting the strengths based on a process and weaknesses. Here's a list of things that you can consider as strengths and weaknesses for your organization. And remember what one person's strengths might be another person's weaknesses. If you want more, if you're struggling to come up with some ideas, here's a couple of resources that I really like to give clients. And that is the first is a business snapshot report. It's a 40 questions of going over all the verticals of your business from marketing, admin, production, and sales. Anything that you score yourself really low on might be considered a weakness. Anything that's really high could be considered a strength. The other one is one of my favorite documents. It's called the five stages of business growth. As we ascend through our entrepreneurial journey in home services, the challenges and the things that we do are different during stage one through five. So this is a really good overview of how your business scales from beginning to end, and also a tool that you can use to identify those strengths and weaknesses depending on where you are in your business. So we want to highlight and emphasize these strengths and weaknesses. Now the SWOT analysis isn't really intended to be holistic. It's not defining every single thing that we do as a strength and weakness, but really just highlight to three to 10 different areas that you feel like you really excel and things that you wanna make sure that you shore up. The next thing I wanna do is look at opportunities and threats. Remember, these are the external. Here's a list. We don't have any resources for opportunities and threats because it's always changing, but just general funding options and availability, government restrictions, the state of the economy, uncertainty, seasonality, technology, emerging competition, things that you can think consider as 
influences, not control, but outside of your control influence on your organization. And again, on the third most important phase is how we can look at the relationship between our opportunities and threats with our strengths and weaknesses. How we're going to take those weaknesses in our organization and make them strengths based on the opportunities that we see or the threats that we want to hedge or remove. So that's the whole goal of the external is how do we take what we have already in our control with our organization and leverage the influence to take advantage of or mitigate and hedge. So here is an example of a completed SWOT analysis for a home service. I ran through this exercise with one of my clients. We did this as the first stage of strategic planning. So go through this and make sure that you have some action or you have some next steps. Just because you do a SWOT analysis, it doesn't mean anything. Remember, it doesn't identify any particular strategy. All it does is just baseline and benchmark where you are today. This is the catalyst for our strategic plan. This is where we start our strategic planning exercise. Knowing where we want to be tomorrow is influenced by where we are today. You can't go from 100,000 to 100 million if you don't have any cash in the bank to grow. So you have to make sure you know exactly what your strengths and weaknesses are, which is going to help propel you in your strategic plan. So the first phase again is benchmark. Where are you today? The second phase is casting vision. Where do you want to be tomorrow? And the final phase is the tactical approach. When and where are we going to emphasize our energy to make sure that we can capitalize our growth as efficiently and with as least amount of headaches as possible? So that is the strategic plan for your home service business. It exists now. I hope you take advantage of this and capitalize on it. I've got more videos coming on the other two stages of strategic planning. And this whole channel is geared toward home service businesses. If you own a home service company and you're struggling in any way, or you really want to have a tool and a resource of somebody who's been there, done that and coached hundreds and hundreds of businesses ranging from zero to hundreds of millions of dollars, this is the place to be. If one of your goals is to get more clicks and more calls and sell more jobs to more customers more often at a higher average ticket, this channel's for you. If you like this video and you want to hear more, click subscribe and get notified every time a new video is released. I've spent the last 10 years studying from, coaching some of the most successful home business companies in the world, and I'm ready to have a platform, this channel, to share and give back everything that I've learned to make the home service industry even better than it is today. No strings attached, free resources. What more could you ask for? I'll see you on the next video. Take care.